I wouldn't want you to think with any of this that uh, I don't like penises or blowjobs. I actually think that the blowjob can be really good for me. I've been having this uh, problem with tonsil stones. I don't know if you know what the tonsil stone is. Uh, it's when uh, little pieces of bacteria or food get stuck in the delicate folds of your tonsils and they start to uh, accumulate, uh, get bigger like a uh, snowball, till they form these small uh, yellow or white stones that smell like uh, death and shit. It's very provocative, the combination. Uh, you know it's really bad when you're walking past like some open sewer construction and you have this moment of doubt where you think like, is that smell coming from outside or inside my body? That's when you know it's really bad. Uh, and getting them out is very, very difficult. You have to look in the mirror and you have to get a toothpick or a Q-tip and try to like pick them out. It's very uncomfortable. Sometimes you accidentally poke your throat, you know. And, but this one time I was given a blowjob and I had the penis all the way to the back of my throat. And all of a sudden it was just like, both of the tonsil stones came out. So easy, so painless. I haven't really figured out what the best noise for that is. I don't know if it's like or would be better like or or I haven't really figured it out, but I, I've been I've been thinking about it. But I, but I thought, you know, next time I'm not going to do the toothpick or anything. I'm just going to go straight for the penis. And, uh, you know, in that way, the, the blowjob is very good for me. And it made me start to get really schemy because I have these two impacted wisdom teeth that I need to get removed. And I started thinking like, oh, maybe I could do it with a penis because I don't want to go in uh, and get the oral surgery. So, but like, maybe if I find a penis with a piercing, and we could tie a string to the to the ring and then tie it to the tooth and do it like you know they used to do it with the with the doors the doorknob just pull it right out and uh, it probably wouldn't be enough um, force so i thought okay maybe if i have uh, one dick in the mouth and the other behind from behind and we go at the same time it will create like an internal suction and it will just come right out I'm just kidding. I actually already had the surgery and uh, I want to tell you it was very, very inspiring. I really thought about the interconnectedness of all things um, because the, the holes that they left in my mouth were very jagged. The flesh was very torn uh, where the stitches were and it reminded me immediately of the circumcised penis of a baby, an infant. I don't know if you've ever seen the circumcised penis of an infant. Not many people have, but um, it looks really violent. It looks really torn. And it surprised me the first time I saw it. I thought it was gonna be like really clean cut. Like uh, when I was a kid, we used to chew on raw hot dogs as a snack. And you can get a really clean line peeling the skin off the edge. And it's kind of like a little bit snack, but also a little bit, um, you know, art sculpture. Uh, and I thought the penis was gonna look like that, but it doesn't. It really looks like in the hospital, they had too many circumcisions lined up that day, back to back. And they were like, you know what, forget it. Let's not use the scalpel. Look, we got this electric pencil sharpener over here. Let's just go. That's what it looks like. And I thought, wow, torn flesh is torn flesh. The torn flesh of my wisdom tooth holes is the torn flesh of the circumcised penis. It's one and the same. It's all interconnected. Torn flesh is torn flesh is torn flesh. <laughs>